Hello everyone, Attack Power here with game technically three between Mamil and Farid Rommel in the season 11 Steel Division 2 League. Let's dive right in here to Shichedrin. And on the left in the red, we have Mamil playing 97th Stroki on Vanguard Income. And on the right in the blue, we have Farid Rommel playing 20th Panzer also on Vanguard Income. So this is like an old school matchup here, guys. I mean... I'm pretty sure both these are original. 20th definitely is. I think 97th is a, a, like original. Nah, maybe it's not. I can't remember if it's 84th or 97th is original. But 97th, if it's not original, it's very close. You know, it's like one DLC or two DLCs off. So this is like, this this is a this is an OG match right here. So I'm really excited about this. These guys are like tied, you know, like they got equal points in the in the group stage. So that's why they have to play like a game three to determine the tiebreaker uh, who moves on to the playoffs, I guess. So let's dive into the decks here. I'm starting on the left with 97 Shulky, a very solid division. There's really nothing terribly wrong with this division. It's got a lot of strengths. Um, you know, it's got the standard Soviet weaknesses, but it's got a lot of the best Soviet tools. Uh, the support, the uh, recon tab, really solid. You get snipers, you get T-34 76s, and then you get the Razvedkador, which is another sniper unit along with like a machine gun. So it's actually really, really quite good. Um, the uh, infantry tab, it's, it's, basically standard infantry you do get a card of strafnikis which is definitely really nice uh but outside of that it's, it's very standard uh you do get plenty of good dp as well which is definitely a plus um and he's bringing you see here a c phase card of avtos and Gavardi dp you'd think they're playing balanced but they're not uh then our tank tab really nice mix here when in this division you get some t 3045s you get t 3476s you get an is1 and you get an is2 so really just like basically the entire gambit of solid Soviet armor here. It, there's really nothing to complain about. The support tab here, just kind of like the standard light um, Russian stuff. Uh, no ISUs or anything like that definitely could be one of the big issues with this deck. Although I, I could have sworn there was an SU-152 or something in this. There probably is, and he's not playing it here because you don't need 2K HE on Shichedron. So I think there is... I could be wrong, but I think there is, and uh, but he's not using it. The AT tab really solid. You get plenty of Zis twos, and Zis twos are like what one of the better, uh, definitely one of the best AT things for the Soviets. You also get forty five mils, and those are phenomenal. Uh, Zis threes are uh, very underwhelming. The AA tab just thirty seven mils, which is definitely very lackluster, but not bad at the same time. The RD tab nothing spectacular, although we do have the one hundred and thirty two millimeter rocket off map, the doomed day wipe a section of the map weapon and then the air tab we have some po twos which are just super cheap recon and then you have the p2 which is a great bomber hopping over to the 20th panzer you guys have seen this one recently if you didn't see my game against stan go check that out it is a it's a it's a trip of high, emotional highs for attack power and very a very enjoyable match but anyway the recon tab here he's just taking the panzer threes no infantry recon Ugh, never a fan of that uh, the infantry tab is solid for a panzer division. It's really quite good. Uh, the special things here, you get Ostrup and you get Stostrup uh, with a Molotov. You get Panzer Grenadier DP, which is actually one of the cheapest cheapest double machine gun units in the game. Uh, so that's really good. Pioneer SVTs, which are essentially Sapity, and the rest are Panzer Grens. The tank tab, a nice mix of medium and light units here. You get Panzer 3s, Panzer 4Gs, which are nice cheaper Panzer 4s. You get T-34s. And then uh, you get the boy to Stalin, which is a, uh, which is an IS two basically, but it's a nineteen forty three IS two, so it's got the lighter armor. The support tab, this is a phenomenal support tab. You get Grillas, you get Panzer threes, Panzer fours, IG eighteens, MG forty twos. He's not bringing any of the Panzers though. Kind of surprising actually, because for their price and their availability, they're pretty fantastic. So kind of surprised not to see those at all, uh, especially when he's bringing like extra cards of Panzer fours. Like, I, I feel like he could definitely, like, especially on Vanguard Income, like, he's got this built like it's a balance deck. And I understand they're both planning to go long, but this is a lot in the late game for his income. Uh, but anyway, the AT tab, really solid here. You get pack 40s. You could get 45 mils, uh, like the basically the, the M42s without the APCR. You get pack 43s for their 2K really strong AT. Martyr 1s, you get two cards of those. Uh, just a great AT tab. AA tab, also phenomenal. You get FLAC 43s and FLAC uh, 4188s. I do think you get SDK of Zeds if you want. I want to say yes. But the FLAC 43s are so good. You don't 
really need him. Uh, the Artie tab also really good. Uh, he's bringing the yucky off map, 81 mortars, SK, uh, SK 18. You also could get heavier one fifties. If you want it. air tab, definitely lackluster. The fighter sucks. It's a BF one nine G two. The BF one nine bomber is good, but it gets blanked really early in the game. And then you get a card of JU 87 clusters, which is definitely really nice, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not breaking the game or anything like that. So, yeah, and I just realized I'm going to leave this up on screen that I never actually pressed play on the game. So we got to wait here a second, but I leaving up the 20th Panzer pick for a little bit. Yeah, I, I really like 20th Panzer. I actually think it's still a very much A tier division. 97th is an A tier division, too. There's nothing, there's no doubt about these two divisions being quite strong, both in their own right. Uh, the 20th, I would say, is a little bit stronger, uh, but not anything overwhelmingly better than 97th. Again, it's very map dependent as well. Uh, but here we go. We are off. This is anybody's game here. Both these players phenomenal in both these divisions. Very strong. So we'll have to see. Here comes an early PO2. PO2, the PO2. Uh, very bad resilience. It's stupidly slow for a plane. It has exceptional agility, though. It can turn on a dime. Just kidding. This has nothing to do with turning. Apparently, it can dodge AA, even though it's still going to get shot down like immediately. It's got very bad resilience. Uh, we see... Mamil here going hard. No, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Farad here going hard up north. And Mamil actually going really light. This is odd. Usually players super commit to that hill. But it looks like Mamil's going to go strong in the town. Well, there's a lot here for Farad too. How's Farad deploying so much? Just a crap ton of cheap infantry. Yeah, the old stupid and the stole stupid are both pretty cheap, relatively speaking. Handershrek in the church tower. Definitely an interesting choice. But the Ogden and Cheek do get wiped out of the stole stupid. Stone Super are solid. They're not my favorite units, but since they have the Molotov, you kind of need to take them off. And I actually didn't uh, when I built this my deck recently. Definitely a questionable choice. Paid off, but quite, I, we were on slits though. I didn't think the uh, I didn't think it was as big of a deal. The uh, M2A1 though, this is definitely going to shred a little bit in here. There's not really any AT on the infantry, and that's definitely an issue for 20th Panzer. Is uh, a lot of your infantry coming without AT. You can get some Panzer Grens with, with Panzer Faust, and, but that's about it. And that can definitely be a big issue. Up north, I mean, Farad's easily got this hill so far. Uh, the T-34 is definitely going to hold him up. The Panzer III could trade up to that quite well, though. And that's where Panzer III shine is when they're up against, you know, like Shermans or, or T-34s. Um, and they can uptrade to him. Yeah, Farad very much in control of this hill. I don't see him losing that anytime soon. We do see an early 122 out of Emil. Emil doing really well in the town, though, keeping up the aggression and successfully pushing Farad out here so far. Po2 goes down to the BF-109. That, that just speaks to how weak the Po's are because BF-109's loadout is really sad and very rarely can kill things in a single pass. Vandergren goes down. There's not much here to stop Mamil if he stays on the stays on the offensive here. He could even grab this flag way back here. Pioneer SVT gets unloaded out in the open. Now, well, actually, the M2A1 is going to lose sight of it. Tankos tried to get in, but the Pioneer SVT caught them out in the open, and they're just going to get wiped. That's pretty painful. Those tankos are really important. M2A1 goes down to the Panda 3. T34 is still here. Still chilling out. SG-42 trying to hold the line, and now we see the 122 in for the IG-18s. I've, I don't know, 122s, they can be really good. I'm never excited to call one in, I'll be honest. But they, they can be very good, though. I, I would be wrong. I would be lying if I said they were bad, because they absolutely are not. T-34 misses its first shot. The Martyr 1 still hasn't gotten on target, but it is a two-star Martyr 1. Does have AP on. So Farad doing the right micro there. T-34 lands its second hit. But the T-34 goes down. Martyr 1s are a very efficient unit. Martyrs in general are a really cost efficient, are just a really cost efficient unit. Uh, especially the Martyr 3 is, in my opinion, the best of the Martyr class. Uh, getting that 130 millimeters of penetration for only 35 points is pretty nuts. And the HE is really strong. But on the other hand, the Martyr 1, Martyr 2, these guys come with the Pack 40 gun and the APCR and stuff. So they're definitely better tank killers. There's no doubt about that, but they're much worse against infantry and stuff. And they're not nearly as cost efficient, although they are still cost efficient con considering they're cheaper than most tanks and can kill basically any tank. So the M2A1 actually swung down here and grabbed this flag. It's a really fun play there from Emil to continue to exert pressure here early. Four minutes in, remember both players on Vanguard, so there'll be no income 
uh, you know, advantage to create pressure just from having more points. Potu's dropping out of the sky. Oh my goodness, what a play! What a cheeky play! Oh, but Mamil predicted it and moved the 122 just enough to survive the bombing strike. So uh, Farid couldn't actually see the 122. He just was bombing where he saw the Artie coming from. And Mamil, seeing this coming, moved it just enough to dodge the bomb. Artie pieces do have a lot of health in terms of, like, number of troops. So these BF-109s with their singular bombs a lot of times don't have the killing power to actually shoot them down, to, to kill them in one, like, pass. So Ferret hold on to the hill here, but not by much. Mamil's not super strong here, though, at all. M2A1 will definitely hold off any infantry that try to pass. But here's a Panzer III, and there's nothing here to stop that. No Zist two or anything here. Mamil continues to push through the town, but Ferret bringing in reinforcements. The Ulster are going to have an issue, though. They can't do much against that M2A1. So Mamil building up a little bit of a point lead here, but he has lost the north, and a lot of times it's really hard to win the game if you lose in this entire middle hill. If Mamil can hold on to this part, that's definitely a plus. It's a big plus. That means he's only missing one flag here. And currently he's got one, two, kind of three, but not really. Now the Panda 3 probably going to come kill that M2A1. Still going to have some time here, though, on that extra flag getting that 1311 and then these mirror income matches every moment does count sg43 winning out against the mg42 not sure how that happened is gavardia weirdly standing out in the open here feel like they should shift into an actual building there they go very able to poke out and grab this flag though here we do see some reinforcements coming in for mamil Panzer 3 takes a hit from the T-3045. Why isn't it shooting back? Oh, can't see it. Oh, that's awkward. And down the Panzer 3 goes. T-3045s, I, I actually really like them, especially the 1943. Well, yeah, especially the 1943 area because they're only 95 points, and that's actually really cost-efficient. Now, the 1944 gets the 2K range, which is obviously really helpful. 37 mil, dropping the ball, letting that PO-2 get shot down again. Although the 37 mil is in kind of an awkward position, so that's why it happened that way. M2A1 going to get through all its ammo here soon. It'll help them win. T-34 bounces the Panzer three. T-345 moving in position. And the 1944 gives you the 2K range, which is pretty huge, but it is 15 points more, which is not a small amount of points. Ooh, Panzer... Th wow, at range? Really? Wow, that was shocking, actually. The T-3476 should have been able to bounce that Panzer three shell a little better than that. Well, that was actually shocking that that died so easily. Panzer Shark trying to get into the town here. Will it succeed is the question. It's hunting for that T-3485. 122 is just kind of softening these infantry up. The M2A1 fell back for some reason. Oh, this... I don't actually know. The Panzer 3, I assume? Gavardi trying to get to the edge of the forest before these pioneers can get in, and they do succeed. Gavardia are pretty bad. I'm surprised. Why does he have Gavardia at all? He should have a third card of Gavardia DP, but he's not using them. So I'm pretty sure 97th has two, three cards. Usually the Strelke divisions have three cards of Gavardia DP. So I'm kind of confused. Maybe they only have two because they have a Strafniki card. Maybe he just really wanted a 20 point infantry. That is very possible. Gavardia is going to get hit here by this BF 109. It's going to hurt. Oh, yeah. Big ouchie here. Ow. Yep, and everything's pinned. Airstrike, very effective. P2 gets in. Should kill off one of these support weapons. Flak 43 almost stopped it. Ooh, IG-18 survives. I'm surprised Emil hasn't moved this 122 forward. It, there's so many targets for it to direct fire. Double SG-43 isn't in now, so they can easily hold off these Ulstruppen. Both players using their cheap, crappy infantry to the, as much effect as they can. And it's actually, and now that I think about it, it's really weird. I understand the 20-point infantry for a balanced guy because you only have 110 points. You need the cheaper infantry. 
But these are both Vanguard. Like, they have the points to buy better stuff. Whoa, T3045 picking up a pack 40 in the transport. Ouch. Martyr 1 responds with a hit with its APCR. That still means that the T3045 will die if it gets hit by one AP shell. Well, penned. I should say penned by one AP shell. Avto Camarade here going to get killed. These Gavardi are not repositioning into the forest. T3485 did go down to the Martyr 1. Ouch. Martyr 1's getting a lot of value. And this is where 20th really shines. You just have so much efficient armor. And you can't say that about a lot of armor divisions. There, there's not there's no such there's not a lot of such thing as like efficient armor. A lot of it just ends up dying. You're losing a lot of points when that happens. But 20th has a lot of the most efficient Axis armor pieces, Panzer threes, Martyrs. Uh, these units really, and Panzer three fours, as in like in the support tab and stuff. Um, these units really do start to add up, and the fact that you're not actually paying that much for them really starts to get difficult to deal with. But we're now into B phase. You see Grill is pouring in. Farid called in a B phase card, so he's got eight of them. So he's clearly pl planning to uh, cover the entire map with 2K power HE. M2A1 flying in. Panzer Shrek is there, though. Could take that out. MG42 finding... I'm assuming this is too? No, it's going after the SG43. There's 122. There we go. This one is... <laughs> this one's in position to shoot. Why wouldn't he just move this one forward? Really strange. P2 coming in. There's no flak here, though. Pack 40 going to go down to that. Almost definitely. T3045 finally in position. Tanko coming in in its transport. Going all the way. The Panzer three has died. This ooh, oh, 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 is he going for it? He could go after this 81 with mortar. That would be huge. Martyr one is there, though. Can the T-3485 land a hit and survive? It does land a hit. Let's see if the Martyr one can respond, but it's on a hill. Hill pression strikes again. Dun, 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 dun. This mechanic is bull crap. Both support weapons on the hill have died now. 122 could shift into a slightly better position if you really wanted to support, but double Panda 3 now moving on the hill. Thing is, most of the Panda 3s are dead. That means Farid's efficiency is slowly going to drop here as he starts getting into less efficient units. BF109 hilariously ground strafes. A Flak 41 coming in. Now, if this C3485 picks this up, this would be absolutely devastating. Whoa. T-3485 going for the mortar. If he gets this kill, that would be huge. The 88 is lining up. Lands its first shot and penetrates. T-3485 stops firing at the mortar. Oh, why? Oh, no, oh, Farid, you had a chance to kill the mortar. No, wait. Mamil had a chance to kill the mortar. Flak is now pinned. M2A1 driving through trying to do some surrenders. Is succeeding now. Tanko on that flag. 14-10 from Mamil. But... Farid is making significant progress here on this hill. Do we see any heavier armor coming in? We do not. What is this 122 going after? Oh, it's going after the flag. This one finally in a position to actually do something directly. M2A1 does go down actually to T3040, uh, 76 here. 88 is going to be a bit of an issue. Not a lot of 2K here. The IS-1, though, definitely can literally tank for this flak for quite a while. The flak will pen it eventually, but it, the penetration chance is low at maximum range. Ooh, 122 landed. Good hit on that flak. 1311 still for Meal getting a little bit of a little ticket lead here. Do you see the OB-25 in the Super OB-25? This is the most mighty weapon in all the game. Just kidding. But this, this, this thing is cracked. I don't know why it slaps so hard. It's like the best infantry gun in the game, hands down. Uh, Non-2K, I should say. Non-2K infantry gun in the game. This thing is absolutely bonkers good. The heat shell hits a lot. It pens often. And the actual like HE is just really good. Kills IG-18s all the time, very easily. But this time, getting overwhelmed. All that stuff is too much. This dude just chilling, waiting. Grilla, though, getting into a position here to hit this stuff. This is going to hurt. Ooh, Razvakador, will it get out? It does. Get the DT and sniper combo there. Farad almost has the whole hill now. 
This three being unloaded for these Panzer threes. Oh, oh my goodness. What a ballsy unload there. Is this three trying to get on target here? What is it doing? Freaking line up and shoot, dude. Let's -a go. Let's -a go. Oh, and it's. Oh, no. AT guns have a real glitchy run going lately. T34 gets pinned. Penned. That sucks. T-34 goes down right away. This threes are getting some penetrations here. Left APCR on, though. One goes down. Loader wounded. HE now going. BF-109. Bombing strike is forced off. Po-2 in. This three's falling back. SG-43 trying to hold off everything. 81 Memorial getting hit by the arty there. Oops. A little miss micro there from Farid. Emil still holding this flag down south, though. Both of these, I mean, this, is a, this was a very nice push from Emil. To capture these is really quite impressive because it, they're deep. It is not easy to grab and hold these, and he's holding them. Grabbing them, yeah, temporary, sure. But holding like he is, really quite good. OB-25 holding off all the swarms of infantry. I always read that loader loaded wounded crit is permanent, so that's, that's going to stick around a while. 122, I'm not sure what it's shooting. Oh, it, it's aiming at stuff. Even Mortar now moving after getting a couple... Hits from the 122. Panda 3 eliminating some infantry here. Razved Kodor in, finding the Panzergrens on the hill. Grillo went down to, I assume this is this too, based on its health. Black and retargeted here. There is a leader here who might get hit. SK-18 up really far. Going for the counter battery on that 122. It probably will succeed. 37 mil coming in. Coming into a pretty open position, though. Grillo goes down to assist three. Ouch. There for Farid. Definitely very lucky there for Emil. Now, Farid does have a lot of goods, but he's he's ripping through them. I mean, this is the fifth or sixth already. He ain't holding back, that's for sure. Panzer four leader now in. Once he spot his infantry. Tanko's doing what Tanko's do, crushing some infantry at CQC. While Struppen spotted Grilla, finding some open units to pick on hard. IS-1 is here, but it's getting held up doing some infantry killing. Mule's still on the 1311. BF-109 swinging around south, it looks like? I mean, the 37 mil is here. It is a double vet 37 mil, which does make it a lot more effective. 122 trying to move, but it isn't an attack order, so it's getting held up, and it goes down to the SK-18. Nice hit there. The thing is, Mamil has six of these 122, so losing one is not exactly backbreaking. There are four SK-18s for Fair, though. One twenty two now going after the 88. BF-109 floating in the back. Kind of weird. Usually they're in or they're out. It's not really floating these kind of guys around. Trafniki trying to get into the town. They do succeed, actually, without getting killed. Most of the AT on the hill was killed off, so lucky Trafniki there. One twenty two is not on target anymore. Things surprisingly static right now. Panzer IV, Grillo coming in again for, my goodness gracious, I've never seen someone spam Grillos, but it's happening. T-34, 1943 coming in again. Looks like there are no T-34, 1944, so, oops, awkward deck building choice there by uh, Mamil. I do understand, I mean, these are much cheaper, and on this map, you're not usually fighting at 2k a lot. You're usually stuck in these, like, on the hill, fighting pretty tight, or in the town, but with both of these players pushing so hard on one flank, it has opened up into this weird spot. Oh, ooh, is this two picking up a nice kill there on the Martyr 1? Gorilla coming in. It's going to be in a dangerous spot though. that. It's in range of the Zist 2, which means it could be easily killed. B2 coming in for the bombing strike on the MG42, I assume? Or the IG-18, I can't tell which. Yeah, the MG42, as I assumed. Mortar back on, on, on it. IS-1 got really close. Oh, my. Gonna get a hit there, but ooh, that pack, that flak is going to pen it at this range. Oh goodness gracious! Ah, do it. 
Meal force targeting. Still tanking though. It's really pin. Another T3045 in to try to save the day. 37 mil does catch the JU87 in time. Panzer IV goes down. Oh, this this thing's got a pen eventually. It's got 160. Oh, it's only 160. I thought it was 165. I mean, it's, I mean, I guess it's eh, yeah, it's at almost 1500 meter range. I'm still surprised that black is not penned one time. Half track goes down. 88 gonna run out of AP shells here at this rate. Eyes ones are very good. This unit is pretty phenomenal. It only shows up in like two or three divisions. This one. 26 Strelke. I feel like there's one more. For 130 points, this thing is a monster. Phenomenal armor. You get the same T3045 gun. 37 mil getting caught out by one, I'm not sure. The mortar. It's good from the mortar. The flak on the hill did die. These 122s are doing work. I can't take that away from Emil. They absolutely are. We're now into C phase. So both players choked down to 90 points, but both players built. Four C phase. It's kind of weird. Like both players knew they're gonna play this game long on the Vanguard mirror. T thirty four seventy six. No chance here at CQC. Now, if this was a Panzer four, that would be a great trade up, but no chance here. Uh, Oskin actually getting a kill. The Ace not instantly dying for once. Oh, Stravniki gonna take a. Oh, that hurt. Grill on the run now from Oskin. He's coming. The Russians are coming. 22 is now covering off here, and Emil has been able to just keep up this 13 or 14 10. 88 in takes out the IS 1. Easy kill there for that. Pack 43 coming in clutch. T34 finds it, misses its shot. Wah, wah. 14 10 still from Emil, though. I'm not half toes, really? Okay. I guess for when they try to get in tight, I guess it makes some sense. It's a little odd, not gonna lie. I feel like he would just want more like long range infantry to hold off him getting into the town at all. You do the 122 though, that's the thing. Razorcador are in a weird spot for spotting because they can't spot all the way on the hill. 122 is actually being manually targeted, so he's gonna lose that opportunity. Old Serpent trying to take out the 37 mil. If they do, that'll be really helpful. I think one has died. There's still six in the deck. Martyr 1 going to pop his head out to try to get that kill, but there's no actual good angle here until you get all the way down the hill. Well, Serban finally pinned down. 122 really should, like, untarget. So it can easy kill these infantry. We're doing so much damage right now. 122s are really good direct firing. The 88 was hit by some sort of arty. The 120 oh, the OB found it. No, I don't know what did, actually. It really looks like Artie hit it. Something just got killed. This T-34 getting super aggressive now. Finding some reinforced skills. Going for the mortar. Is he going to get it? The tank goes spotting. And down it goes. What a kill. Emil's pressure down south really paying off. T-34 just fired though. The Martyr 1 turning the corner. T-34 needs to reload. It does in time. Gets the first penetration. Martyr gets the penetration, but Martyr 1's fire so fast. We've already erased by Grill. These guys are going to trade. There they go. That's not a great trade from Emil as he needs to kill off this Grillo before it kills off all his infantry. Back up north, they'll stroke and go down. Grillo on the hill here. Took out the Zis 2. Infantry now getting hit. This two trying to get into position, but it's going to be pretty far off. Panzergren forced off just in time. He, too, coming in for that gorilla. They can do pretty well against them. Although this is the lighter one, I want to say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a 500 kilogram bomb one. How many points is this? No, maybe there's not a lighter one. I mean, a heavier one. I apologize. Gorilla going to dodge, and this is the issue with heavy bombers for tanks. Yeah, they can do it, but they're very easy to dodge. You just move the tank. It takes so long for the bomb to drop from the sky. It doesn't work the same with fighter bombers because they're basically dropping directly on top of it. This two trying to get into position here. This infantry taking a lot of damage. 15-9 now, though, from Emil. 
Bottom flag's captured. He's back on this hill. Not even sure when this happened exactly. Sorry for missing it. I'm sure y'all saw it. I'm too busy looking at other stuff. And this blob of infantry really can't be stopped. Avto's so good at this point. I, I do think they're in a good place, though. I don't think they're unfairly or unbalancedly good. Um, I, I feel like the Soviets are probably the least good major faction in the game right now. Um, I, major as in any faction with three or more divisions. Uh, so we're not counting, like, Bulgaria. Um, you know, those kind. Where they're really you know, don't really have a faction for all intents and purposes. They do, but they don't. Um, you know, I just feel like the Soviets don't got it. I don't, I don't know. I mean, certainly they're probably, they're more well-rounded than say like the Finnish or something like that. Um, you know, compared to like the Romanians, the Hungarians or the, or even the Germans, uh, Americans, Commonwealth, French, uh, they don't, they don't compare to those as well. I just think those uh, there's a lot more strong divisions in those factions than the than the Soviets. Wow, 122 landed a big hit there on the SK-18. We do see the first IS-2 in. Will it magically hit? No, it actually missed. There it is, folks. It missed. They do miss. They can. How fast does this thing fire? Four rounds a minute. It is unvetted. If you're going to hit hard, the Panzer is forced off. Martyr 1 hasn't moved, and now it does, but it might be too late. It is. Martyr 1 goes down. Yeah, pretty big loss, actually. That was really kind of holding up the uh, reinforcement route here. And now Emil grabbed this flag here. What a cheeky grab, but Farid doing a reverse here with his half-track to capture some stuff back. A bunch of infantry here trying to hold the line. There's no more armor down south right now. We do see a T-3476 coming in. Do try to solve that. 122 out of position to help. We do see a mortar coming in for an IS-2. The, the 20th Panzer does have the flak, the pack 43s certainly to deal with this thing. It is the 1944 variant, though. It's going to be a little tougher not to crack. P-2 in to hit some of these infantry. Meal still on a 13 level with a pretty big gap. Pretty sizable difference here in tickets. But Ferret has finally rolled back this push in the south. Sniper's gonna get killed here pretty quick, I would think. Oh yeah. Hilo sees it. Sees it. Boom, 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 boom. Gone. I almost feel like Mamil should just put that on return fire for the information. Like that recon could have provided him so much information just chilling down here. Like seeing every unit that comes in as a reinforcement, that could have been really helpful. This three is doing their HE thing. They're they're actually quite good at HE. I, I would almost classify a this three as almost an infantry gun. Its actual AT uh, AP capabilities are really lackluster, like really lackluster. Um, but its HE does a lot of damage. Like it does a high, a very high damage rate for its HE shell. And it technically can. I, I'm pretty sure it can indirect fire. I'm having a moment if it does or not. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. So, like, I mean, it's closer to an infantry gun than it is an AT gun, for, all, for at least in practice. And most infantry guns have some sort of heat shell. I mean, of course, it's not heat, but it has APCR instead. Already going after the mortars. IS-2 just going to town on this hill. I mean, it does have good HE damage. It would be an understatement to say that IS-2s are bad at shooting soft targets. They just fire really slow, so it just still takes, even with their higher damage, it still probably kills about the same speed as a normal tank. All right, this too has found the Grilla. Can it do the job in time? Grilla gets a shot off, takes a penetration, misses, and it goes down. This twos are good for their fire rate. Their actual penetration is not 185, it's 110. I want to say it's 110. Pretty, it's pretty lackluster in terms of actually like an, an AP shell. It's 120, excuse me. Uh, the APCR only fires a thousand meters. Like, look at the difference in range here. This is very abnormal. Usually, it's 1750, 1500, maybe 1250. But to have 1750 and 1000 is so bad. Um, it's really rough. So you you don't actually have a lot of penetration. The bonus is the 12 rounds a minute. That's where you get. That's where the ZIS-2 shines is because once it does get on target, it pumps out the rounds. Like, you definitely get penetrations because of that fire rate. 
But compared to say a uh, Pack 40 or a Frasitza, not even it, it's not even close. There's, there's no comparison. Panzer 3 getting its APCR on talking, getting a nice crit with the loader wounded. And now it'll easily pen two more times with the slow reload here. These C3476 have been really like legit failures this game. The meal really needs some recon right here so he can actually see this hill. Because he's about to have his eyes to killed by this pack 43. Oh, immediate penetration. It's on the run. Yeah. P2 tried to retarget, I think, on the the pack 43 and failed. Why did the OB not Oh, it's an OB. I thought that was a 122. Oops. Strafniki bouncing on the SDK of Zed. This two finding a half track kill easy. Back to a 12 12, but I mean, Emil's the one who's way ahead on tickets. It's Ferret who's got to push to get this difference back in. Martyr one going after the Zis two. Zis two, but getting hit by the infantry gets pinned down early, which means its shot does miss. If one nine somehow still getting through this late in the game is quite good for Farad. Like I said earlier, usually they're kind of just blanked by this point in the game. 122 successfully forcing off the 88. Another T-34 is in. Panda 3, though, is out of APCR, so now it's got to do it the harder way. Although it's still got... The AP can easily at this range pen... Especially a 1943 uh, T-34 with its only 75 millimeters of frontal armor. And Mamil back on a 1311. Already get wiped out, Grilla out of ammo though. I don't know, this is becoming a difficult prospect for Ferry to turn this around despite having the entire hill at one point. He just was not able to, to respond effectively to Mamil's aggression down south. I think he Ferret's starting to run out of gorillas. He's, he's called a lot of them in, like I said. Even with eight of them, I mean, he's he's called in six, seven, potentially eight already. Nope, there we go. That's probably eighth. I don't know. It might, might be more. I don't know why I ever say that, because every time I do, I'm wrong. And this one, unless he buys ammo, is essentially dead. And in C phase here, buying ammo is a big commitment. That's half a minute of income. Mamil creating more space down south. Barrett can knock it back into this town. I mean, look at it. There's no way. P2 came in and immediately fell back. Eyes 2 rumbling with the pack 43 again. Lands a big HE hit. I don't know if that's going to save it, though. It does bounce. Ooh. Wow. Ferret decides to break off. I'm kind of surprised by that. Oh, wow, IS-2 misses wide that time. T-34 did get on the Grilla there. Big kill. Oh, it's a T-34-85. I was going to say, I felt really far. It's because it was. Martyr 1 actually bounces. This 2 is involved as well, and that high rate of fire saves the day. BF-109 easily forced off by the double 37 mil double starred back here. Those were some big losses there for Farrah. That was like all his armor down south. Really hurt him. Strafniki trying to take out the IG-18 fails in their duty. I think that's a P2 going down there. Though surprising to only one Flak 43 it would go down. Seems hard to believe. Seems much more likely maybe that was a BF-109 to the 37 mils. Things definitely not looking good here for Ferret. If you just even like look on the map troop-wise. Now, the Soviets always have way more troops than the, than the Germans on the map in terms of when those two factions play. But this is not just the usual slightly more or less. SK-18 getting freebie AP shots here on the T-34 and it gets a penetration. Really? It doesn't insta-kill? 
Uh, oh, because they're AP, not heat. Uh, weird thing is it does nine damage, which is like the weirdest damage amount in the game. Because it doesn't straight kill anything, but it does more than a standard gun. But I don't fully understand why. Is that just like a little neat thing they did way back when and never changed it? I don't, I don't know any unit that has nine health. Truthfully, I don't know what the health is for most of the units in the game, but I'm pretty sure nine is a really weird number. Because eight kills most things, you know, any light stuff in one. Ten is obviously like the standard of health for medium tanks and everything. Oh, sorry, that's not obvious because they don't have it written anywhere. The standard health for most tanks is ten. Heavy tanks have 12, really light tanks might have 8. Vehicles of, you know, smaller vehicles then have a variety of usually even numbers, I thought. And again, this is all kind of my speculation. Because Eugen doesn't tell us what the health of the units are, which I don't fully understand why they don't. And I try not to hate on Eugen because I love Eugen because they make this game, but... I'd be lying if I said some of the things they did weren't really strange that I... Un, inexplicably weird. Like implementing a health system and giving no way to indicate what health each unit has. Like, why? <laughs> I just, like, just why? Another pack 43 here. He really wants that eye is too dead. The thing is, though, for Farid, the eye is too... is, like, not the issue? This dude gets a pen on that. Panzer IV takes it out. Ouch. You know, I mean, the IS-2 is an issue because the IS-2 is an IS-2, but it's not like a... It's not the back-breaking factor here. I don't know. Again, it's holding the south. I mean, it's not allowing Ferry to push down in this town any further, but truly all this crap on the hill is doing that too. So the IS-2 is a little bit redundant in its duty over here. So, I just, I, I don't really agree with committing this many points to trying to kill this thing. Grillo goes down to the first shot of the IS-2. Another Martyr 1 in. Again, these are just so good that it is worth bringing this many. Especially against divisions with, like, T-3045s, they trade incredibly well. Like, that's a 50-point unit that just killed a 95-point unit. But even after that kill... Farad throws in the towel here. 36 minutes and 52 seconds. But Meal victorious here in a very tight and very exciting game there. 3,700 to 2,460. Yes, out trading quite significantly there. Uh, the power of 97th doing the job here. Wow, look at that Zist 2 picking up all those kills. I mean, Zist 2s are good. Like I'm not, I shouldn't say they're bad. I'm just compared to a lot of other AT guns. Statistically, they look lackluster, but the high fire rate makes them really, really good. And that's why like the sheets to slap so hard. It's it's not even just its high penetration. It's the fact it fires so darn fast. One twenty two. Holy crap! The value on those things. Oh my god! Holy bajoli! This is dude doing the same. Ob twenty five. That thing's a monster. Oskin actually did something good. Like usually Ace is just like insta die. There's no actual reason for it. They just seem to. This one, he actually did it. Actually went the distance for once. Other side, BF109 got a lot of value. Uh, Flak 88. Grilla. I mean, I would hope so. He only called in eight of them. But yeah, other than that, nothing super impressive. But if you guys enjoyed that, please make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe for more SD2 content. And consider checking out that Patreon down below. Thank you for all current and past Patreons. It really helps the channel out a bunch. Thanks a bunch and have a fantastic day.